Welcome to Waiting Into Retirement. This house might just be the one. Welcome back to Waiting Into Retirement. It's Mike. And it's Laura. And today we're going to do a tour of Casa Palm. Now, I toured this house on my own. Laura uh, could not be with me on this given day. Um, so I took the videos and tried to uh, manage this process on my own. So I may be talking a little bit more than Laura during this episode. Understandable. I missed a, one of the favorite houses that Michael has come across as well. He was quite excited to tell me about this one and to show this video. Yeah, so this is in the San Antonio neighborhood um, and it was called Casa Palm and it was listed for 250,000 US dollars. Um, so it was really um, kind of a three level home and we're on the middle level right here. So it was set up as um, they were renting the bottom floor and they were living in the top two floors. Um, so what we were looking at here is we took a quick tour of the kitchen in the main living area and this is kind of the, uh, the living room. Um, so on first reflection when I entered this room I thought there wasn't a lot of natural uh, light. It had a little bit of a dark feeling to it. Uh, for me, um, but as I went further through the house, I came to kind of appreciate the entire house as a whole. Well, and that room actually has a insert for a gas fireplace or a propane fireplace, so it already meets one of my criteria after being in San Miguel in some of the cooler weather. Yeah, so here we are walking into the, uh, the master bedroom. Um, the beauty of this home is it's kind of built around a courtyard. And you'll see that later in the video, and that's really what caught caught my attention. There's a lot of outdoor living space. Um, so yeah, we walk through the main um, the main bedroom and into uh, one of the one of several bathrooms. It looks like it's got a lot of furniture in in it as well. Does that take away from the space? Uh, no, it was it was a little bit cluttered, I would say. But it also had a, it had a lot of nice tile work, as you can see here, and there was a lot of that outside as well. Um, like most of the homes that we've been looking at in Mexico, uh, I think they spend less time indoors for obvious weather reasons, and their focus is really on their outdoor space. Um, so here we are coming out into, I'll call it the main level of the outdoor space. I did notice that in the bathrooms they had bathtubs, which is something that we haven't really seen a whole lot of as well. So as you can see, you kind of come out into a central courtyard area and then you can go back in. So this was another bedroom. So it, it was kind of an interesting feeling. It was very much like you were part of a, a campus that was around the a center courtyard. Um, so in order to go from, you know, this bedroom back into the bathroom, we actually went outside back in around into the different part of the house. Almost like a hotel style. Yeah. Motel feel, but your own motel. And then as we walked further outdoors, this was an outdoor um, sitting area. So I imagine this was more designed for the, probably the person that was in the bedroom that we just looked at where they could come out and sit outdoors and look out over the uh, over the view that you had here. And it was a really nice seating area here. You can see it was kind of furnished nicely, lots of nice tile on the walls, um, lots of plants in this particular property as well. That is gorgeous tile work. We've seen a lot with murals, but not tile work to this degree. It really speaks to the area 
and the Fabrica and all the wonderful things that you can find in San Miguel. Yeah. So what we do now is we take a tour. Uh, I'm going to take a, a couple of shots here where I'm looking down into the courtyard. So as I mentioned, there was a renter that was renting down below. So everything that you see up above is kind of duplicated down below. So the people who are renting the bottom floor of this particular property have access to this downstairs um, outdoor space, um, which they had tables and chairs and things uh, set up in. And if you, the person who owned the property, which is what we've toured so far, um, they actually go upstairs and they have an entire outdoor living space upstairs to enjoy. And you can see that gorgeous palm, hence the name Casa Palm. I do love the tile work, even on the ground. Um, I noticed down in the main floor, you have the tabertine flat tile on the mm -hmm. main floor. You have the flagstone, which yeah. is really an unusual thing. And we're going to take a walk up to the upper level as well. You see the railings too, lovely ironwork in addition to those gorgeous plants. Yeah, it was built well. We, we've been in some homes where to get up onto the outdoor terraces, um, the stairs were a little wobbly, a little narrow, and gave me a bit of a feeling of being unsafe. But this place, everything was really solid. It was built well. So this is just more storage space that's at the top of the stairs, which we are now kind of on the outdoor patio here. But um, which which would be great because again some of the other places we saw didn't have a ton of storage space either. And lots of um, implements to take care of all those gorgeous plants. And yep. we're going to see more plants and an even more beautiful space that's outdoor. I think you're right, though, Michael. They really have brought the outdoors inside and the inside outdoors in this particular home. Yeah. So I was taken by all the. Um, all the flowers and plants in this place. Everything came as as is, all the furniture, all the plants, all the outdoor furniture, which was quite nice as well, um, all for the price tag that was that was listed there. So I thought it was a, a good deal for the amount of money that they had been asking for it. Well, and since you seem to really like those plants, it's getting to be springtime in Canada, and I don't seem to have much help in the garden. I guess I will be seconding you to give me a hand with our plants. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> I'm going to say, who's going to be looking after these plants if this is the final home? I like to move in and go, wow, <laughs> that person did a wonderful job on those plants. Where do I pour a little bit of water into them? But seriously, I, I think if you were to have gone out and purchased all of all of these plants and the, um, the planters that they're in and the wind chimes, I think there's quite a bit of money there just in that. I thought it was interesting how they use the fabric too on the top. I think you could pull that mm -hmm. back, but it does give it that open, easy breezy feel and some protection against the sun, which we need. Now you had a bathroom up here as yes. well. So they had built uh, a bathroom up here which was you know very very nicely done uh, the real estate uh, agent was trying to tell me that you could rent the top floor out as well so you could have built off the bathroom made another bedroom and you could have had somebody living up above you somebody living down below you because you know up above they actually had all the plumbing done um, so I mean for us we aren't necessarily looking to rent to anybody but it did give you a number of options here especially when we take you down to the ground floor where somebody was actually renting from the previous owner. And you do have beautiful views of the city like it may not be as mountainous as what you would expect mm -hmm. but you definitely do have that panoramic view. Yeah a lot of nice uh, they had uh, solar panels so again, the real estate agent went to Lentz to explain to me how much money we were going to save because of the solar panels, uh, which was a, you know, a good thing. So there's a nice view there of basically the three levels. I was standing on one level and uh, there's the two down below. So it just had a very nice feel for me. It felt like an old style 
kind of motel. Now, is that a home on the other side of this wall? Yes. So there was a home on one side, uh, and there was kind of an open building lot on the opposite side. That's actually the kitchen table we just passed. So the kitchen was not very large, um, and they did all of their eating. They just walked outside their kitchen area and sat out on that terrace there and ate, uh, which is probably what we would do as well. So now we are down on the ground floor. So there were renters down here that uh, were mm -hmm. just packing up. They were just moving out. In fact, they were having a sale uh, the following day to sell some of their things to get some money. But they were uh, they had to move because the house was, was up for sale. So I didn't have quite the warm feeling that I had upstairs with the basement. It needed certainly some, some paint, but it had some neat neat things to it. So as Laura said, there's like flagstone on the um, floors, which was nice. Um, and, and it had everything you needed. So we're walking through here. This is a, a kitchen area. And um, we're going to come a little further and we get into the bathroom area. So again, kind of a duplication of what was upstairs, but needed it needed some work to I'd say bring it up to a standard that I'd want to rent somebody. Well, you can tell that there is actually a lot of natural light on this ground level, more so than you could upstairs. So I think having so much furniture, maybe on the that mm -hmm. main floor or the owner's living quarters, it uh, made it seem a little bit darker. Whereas on this main floor, you can really tell there's a lot of light, a lot of doors, and again, mm -hmm. bathrooms. Now the bathroom situation with the pumping was a little bit different. You were a bit concerned about how that was gonna manage. Just for this bottom floor, I think they had to pump the sewage up to kind of the ground floor out in front of the house in order for it to get into the city kind of septic system. So there was some sort of tank and pump um, from this ground floor bathroom. And lots of notices to be careful using the facilities on that ground floor, which did cause me a little bit of concern, I guess, because our Spanish is still not what I would say excellent. And if something were to go wrong, we'd have to know who to call and how to speak to them to maybe fix a problem. So this was a bedroom on the ground floor, uh, similar to the one, one that I showed up above. The floor plan is very similar on both floors. Um, you know, in terms of the bedrooms, the bathrooms, where they were located, uh, it's just the this particular floor needed a whole lot more TLC than the one upstairs, in my mind. But you had the advantage here of you just walked right out of your bedroom into this kind of beautiful courtyard. So the people who were renting this were artists and they had painting easels set up throughout here and they would sit out here and do their art all day. Well, it looks like you have a nice little patio space that you wouldn't get rained on as well, which is another nice advantage. We have the dogs, so any kind of space that we have that doesn't require grass cutting is almost a bonus for us as well. I kind of envision the dogs, this would be just a huge playground property for them. I could see them going from this floor down here, running around all the way up to the, the top. Um, well, and as you mentioned, they didn't have the circular iron railings going up, so yeah. the dogs could manage going up and down. That's been a bit of a problem in some of the houses that we've looked at, is how to really have the dogs negotiate. And one last look. So this is Casa Palm and we hope you enjoyed it. Definitely a big contender for us.